Alrighty here. Sick motion here with the patch 6.15 notes. Been a busy week. Uh, wasn't able to do these right when they came out and then I forgot about them the next day. I honestly almost forgot about doing them today, even though I just finished saying I was going to do them as I ended my stream. Um, also, I'm at a temporary uh, streaming location. I know you can't really tell because my webcam's not on, but uh, my mic which is also a temporary mic, is in a different location. Uh, it's a studio mic, so the acoustics with it might be kind of uh, off, so I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully the video works out. Um, I mean, there's no music or whatnot, so you can adjust the sound as according. It's kind of a, a warning here. I'm sure you've already noticed if there is an issue with that. Uh, we'll just roll through here. Braum got some nerfs here. Braum's really strong, so him getting nerfed isn't the worst thing in the entire world. I don't play support, so... Um, I just kind of get my, my plays ruined by Braum and whatnot, but it, a lot of it's aimed at his, uh, his uh, early laning. Uh, the Q uh, damage is down across the entire board, most noticeable probably in uh, early levels in lane, as well as the damage from his passive is down a lot early, but it scales better later on. So once again, early game nerfs. Um, Corky, his... Uh, passive uh, the package is a minute shorter cooldown so now it's on a four minute cooldown rather than a five corky was really really strong for a long time and now he just keeps getting buffed because um, he just got out of play and i guess they want to see him again hecarim <laughs> i've been asked this question quite a bit because i play a little bit of this champion hecarim nerfs here just across the board base damage down uh, 3.37 and the Q damage is down 10 at every level. Very noticeable early on for farming. Uh, the, the first couple levels of Q didn't feel like they did that much damage to kill a minion anyway. Now you're doing a bit less with it. Add on the fact that you're doing less uh, auto attack damage. I did notice I was missing a little bit of farm. Trades in lane still felt relatively the same. Um... I mean, early on, you're not getting off like seven, eight Qs in a trade that often. Um, if you were, you'd probably be noticing that 10 damage off. Where I think this is going to be most noticed is in the jungle, which is where I think it was aimed at. His clear times are a little less forgiving. Um, and his... Uh, his clear... Uh, sorry. His clear speed is a little less forgiving, and his just the, the damage he's going to be taking is going to be a little less forgiving because he'll be killing the monster shorter. Um, so, or sorry, taking longer. Jeez, I'm too tired. Um, but yeah, I noticed that when I was playing top lane Hecarim, but I was trying to kill some jungle camps, it felt like they were taking ages to die. Uh, Illinois here. Her tentacles are now visible in the brush to enemy champions within the normal vision range, so you're not automatically going, well, I think there's a tentacle in that bush, so I don't really want to engage onto her, but there might not be. Um, so kind of a nerf to her. They're actually nerfing that champion, even though no one really plays her. Uh, let's see. Jarvan here. Uh, some straight buffs to Jarvan. His passive attack speed on his flag is up. His passive um, his attack speed aura is up. Um, goes up at later levels, but it's, it's more up at early levels. It's 5% extra attack speed uh, on the passive and 5% extra on the active uh, Jarvan, you haven't been seeing him that often lately, so that's going to be helpful for him. I don't know if it's going to fix what he really needs. There's been some Jarvan buffs um, throughout the patches lately. Still haven't been seeing that many Jarvans. Seen a few, not that many. Mostly uh, the ones I've seen, I think, have just been testing if the changes did anything, and then you don't see him again. So, uh, Karma's nerfs here. Um, I hate playing against Karma. Uh, the shields are very annoying, the speed is very annoying, so karma nerfs are fine in my books. Uh, the shield can no longer target minions, so you can no longer deny farm with that, it's kind of funny. Um, but the shield amount is also down, 10 per level. And her mantra, this is the big thing on her shield, the bonus movement speed isn't 60% at all ranks, it's 40%, uh, so 20% knockoff right off the top, and then it scales up to 60 and that scales with the rank of your shield, so you have to be leveling your shield to be giving that big uh, move speed boost. That was probably the most annoying thing, was just the overall mobility that she provided for everybody while saving them. So, casting in buffs here. I enjoy playing casting in mid. I was playing casting mid a couple times in the past week. 
if you know that it's going to be something you can survive, it. I enjoy the champion. Um, his Q has gone up in damage um, throughout the game. Lower by 5 at level 1, and then the same at level 2, and then it scales up by 5 each level there, and it does 15 more base at level 5 of the Q. Um, the Nether Blade. This was something I actually noticed. This, uh, I guess it's a bug fix. But I definitely did notice this. Um, when you use your W as an auto attack reset on the tower, it does the auto attack reset, but its passive magic damage was no longer applying to the tower until your Nether Blade was no longer ready to to proc on someone. Because it doesn't proc on the tower, but once it was proc to be ready to proc, the passive um, extra magic damage you get per auto. Uh, which was originally applying to the tower before you used it, is no longer applying there. Uh, that's fixed. I thought it was intended. Apparently it was a bug, but it's it should be working now. Force Pulse is down um, mana at le early levels, and it scales up to 80 mana. That's a pretty high cost for a level 1 spell, 80 mana. So that should help a little bit. And that's not what you're going to be maxing first, so that extra 20 mana that you get every time you cast that ability will kind of add up over time. Or extra 20 mana that you didn't spend, I should say. Uh, Melzahar here, some pretty big nerfs to him. Uh, he's been pretty prominent lately since they changed everything and people realized what he could do. So his passive, the cooldown on it, is uh, the same at early levels, but now at later levels. Instead of being 6 seconds, now 12. So it's doubled in time. And the shield duration that uh, you're immune to CC and take less damage, it lasts for uh, a quarter second rather than uh, one second. So if you just look at that in t terms of like where it was and where it is now, uh, passive charge time, twice as long. Passive shield time, four times less. I mean, when you're dealing with uh, numbers that low, saying four times less sounds a lot more impactful than it actually is, but it was very noticeable. I did notice it when I saw it. I was playing against Malzahar today. Nidalee's been changed, buff nerfed. So basically, the the min max damage on her uh, Q, uh, the minimum damage is up, the maximum damage is uh, up early. Um, I guess it's it's up early in both cases and scales up. Um, her cougar form minimum damage is uh, up early, down later. Kind of hard to follow here. Uh, the maximum damage is where it starts to get uh, more noticeable. The maximum damage is less later on um, in her takedown form. Has a higher AP ratio though, and the bonus damage to hunted targets is um, is up. So as long as they're hunted, that's going to be a pretty pretty much a damage boost across the board. Uh, the pounce uh, mini map no longer intercepts the cursor, so you don't pounce in random directions, which is a nice quality of life thing. Uh, here's the big nerf to her, though, for her early clear speeds. Uh, switching between uh, Cougar and Human Form no longer resets your auto attack timer, which is a pretty big deal early on. Um, but she has the damage to compensate. Um, her early clears will probably be a little more rough, but still, I'm still banning Nidalee. That's, I'll put it that way. I'm still banning Nidalee. Uh, Renekton got a buff here. His ult damage is up... Uh, 10 damage per second at level 1, uh, 20 damage per second at level 2, same at level 3, and now when you cast your ult, you gain 20 rage. A lot of times I'd be ulting a little early, like if I was hiding in a bush on Renekton, just to build up some rage to surprise the person. Now you get 20 rage, so that might be enough to not have to waste that extra time that you don't want to waste anymore because you're doing damage per second, more damage per second. 40 damage per second at level 1 of the ultimate is pretty intense, and I don't know how long it lasts. I think it's like 15 seconds, so... 600 damage for doing nothing? Pretty nice. Also, you're probably building a lot of armor against Renekton in a lot of matchups, and that's all magic damage that's getting buffed here, so... Hybrid... Hybrid Renekton. Uh, Shen's base health regen is just down 1.5. Cool. Uh, Shivana's uh, passive uh, fury gain per second... is uh, lowered. Or what? What's going on here? Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm too tired. Passive fear gain per second is increased early on. And then... Um, yeah. 
Shivana gets to be a dragon more often. So there's some other Sona stuff here. They changed a bunch of stuff in Sona last patch. I didn't play much Sona ever, so I'm not going to pretend to know what's going on with that. Uh, there is a bug, though, with Sona where her um, W could be cast uh, instantly after casting Song of Clarity rather than being gated by her brief global cooldown. So that was probably feeling really overpowered, not really realizing it. I don't play Sona, but it's fixed now, so that's good. And there's uh, some uh, hotfix changes where they lowered a lot of her, her heal and the uh, movement speed. She was just really overtuned. Talia's ult is now higher cooldown early, so she doesn't get to roam as often. Still scales down to the same. Vayne Tumble now deals bonus damage to structures for the auto attack reset. And Tumble's bonus damage and Vayne's basic attack no longer crit independently. They'll both crit... Um, Rather, I didn't even realize that was a thing, but that's a thing. And that thing is no longer a thing. Chaos Storm now only counts as returning, moving at max speed regardless of distance, if Victor targets himself. So the Chaos Storm has to go right towards him. It moves faster when it's moving towards him, if you didn't know. Um, but you could kind of be moving it towards him, but towards you, but still not as towards you as it could be. You could kind of be putting it on a bit of an angle. So you could be using it to chase people, but it thinks it's moving towards you, type thing. Now it's a lot more strict on if it's moving towards you or not. Vladimir movement speed down by 5, and the pool cooldown is up 2 seconds across the board, so you'll have more opportunities to kill him. Not feel as frustrating playing against them. Um, mini maps uh, no longer indicate intercepts with uh, Mouse when Zack's charging his E so you don't end up going like randomly casting it backwards kind of like the Nidalee Pounce. Zyra, the Q damage and AP ratio both up. Um, I guess the tweaks that they made to her last patch when she was feeling really strong actually did a lot so now they're just tweaking her damages rather than like the mechanics behind her that they changed last patch. Um, skin splash changes. And here's the item changes. Ardent Sensor and Mikhail's 15% healing and shield power is now a unique passive. I didn't realize it wasn't unique before, so I missed the chance to abuse that if I ever felt the need to. Um, big changes to turrets this patch, actually. Really, really big changes. Um, the shared local gold um, used to be 300, so basically a kill. Now it's 250. Um, the health is up. The... Fortification duration is down to 5 minutes from 2. Damage reduction is up to 50%, though, so it's really hard to kill them in these time windows. Now it's even harder. Um, the damage reduction no longer applies to the bottom lane turrets. I'm pretty sure that's something aimed at competitive play and lane swapping with the LCS, not wanting that to be the go-to thing every single game and never see a 2v2 bot and a 1v1 top. And I agree with that. I think the lane swapping is incredibly boring to watch, personally. I don't really watch the LCS at all and that's a part of the reason of it. So hopefully that kind of addresses that, or at least makes it less of a 100% it's going to happen type thing. And here's another big thing that's going to further enforce that in LCS, and in solo queue it's a big thing as well. In addition to normal reward, rewards, the first turret kill yields 400 total bonus skill gold to its killer's team. So it's basically a first blood worth of gold. That 400 gold is um, split uh, 25 gold to each teammate on your team and 275 split between nearby champions if you're the only person there when that turret dies you get 300 gold because you get the 275 plus the 25 go back up to here where they nerfed the 300 to 250 that's still 550 gold for killing if you're the first one to kill a turret and you kill it solo so in the LCS example, it's probably going to be the AD carry getting the solo proximity gold, and if it's the first blood, that's a ton of money. Uh, you're going to be wanting to defend the first blood turret bonus really hard, and if the bottom turrets aren't fortified, and it's too, uh, like a support AD pushing against just their guy trying to stay alive on that turret, and you lose, like, basically, if you have your... If one team is pushing top, one team is pushing bottom, the team pushing bottom is going to get that turret way faster for those early things. So there's a lot of emphasis on sending people bottom lane to protect it. Um, 
Twisted Tree Line of uh, Lord Van Damme's Pillager, which was basically the old IE on the Twisted Tree Line, now comes back as a completely different item, kind of. It's still an AD item, but it is a AD health item with cooldown reduction that does cool things based on controlling altars, so puts more emphasis on the macro map play. Um, basically, you get a Sunfire. Not a Sunfire, I guess. You, you get a dot that you apply. Um, actually, no. It is a Sunfire. I read this wrong the first time. Uh, it's a Sunfire uh, that deals bonus damage to means and monsters to make it easier to push, and then you just have that Sunfire. doesn't stack with a Sunfire, though, so if you're getting this item, you got to plan to not get a Sunfire. And controlling the other altar um, gives you that dot that your basic attacks burn targets. Um, so if you have both altars, you're going to just be, like ticking people down really hard. If you have both altars as like a Renekton with this item and you're ulting with them on top of all of this, people are just going to start melting. Um, and there's some mini-map icon cleanup as well. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Position select now displays when and what to degree particular position combinations impact estimated queue times. I haven't seen this. Maybe I haven't been looking for it or maybe I'm interpreting this wrong that it's just the estimated queue time is just going up and down. Um, based on what rules I'm selecting, but I was expecting this to be like, if you queue as top and mid, before you queue up, it'll show your estimated queue time, and it'll show what, what part of that's impacting it more, but maybe I'm just expecting something different there. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Ranked team queues have been expanded the windows, so that's cool. You'll have more opportunities to play those modes. Twisted Tree Line falls into the ranked uh, team's queue. It was originally for fives, but they threw threes into it as well. Which, uh, as I said in the patch that that came out, you can go watch that video if you want to hear me talk about that. I, I think the idea behind it is solid. Um, bunch of uh, bug fix thingy-majiggers here. Um, one thing about this patch I will note, I'm hoping it gets hot fixed. I don't, we don't have to wait that long. There is um, some audio-visual bugs this patch specifically with walking into bushes when you walk into a bush and realize there's a ward there for the first time it does it's just been placed visual animation if it has one with that ward and it makes the just been placed sound blue wards will make the just been placed like um invis ward uh sound when you walk in because when you when a blue ward gets placed it makes like that wah or like vision granting clairvoyant sound but it now um now every ward that you walk by will act like it's just been placed, which might not seem like a big deal. If you walk into a bush that you have no vision around the bush and the ward just makes the just been placed um, sound, you're like, oh shit, someone's on the other side of that wall warding into here. And very well, there could be no one on that side of the map. That's very frustrating. The other visual bug that's on this um, patch is if someone starts a uh, recall out of vision and you walk into vision of them and you see them recalling, the recall will act as if it had just started the animation and the sound will act like they just started that recall. But if they're like right at the end of that recall, it'll look like for you that they just started it and then they'll disappear. And I've lost a lot of back, uh, a lot of kill possible opportunities, and I've missed stopping a lot of back simply because I don't think that they are um, that in far into their recall timer. So watch out for those two visual bugs. Um, I know that's not part of these patch notes, but it did happen with this patch, and it's it's been annoying me a lot. It's been very impactful, honestly, and the project skins. So people are going to start spending their money. Make sure you have enough money to pay rent before you buy all the project skins and Riot Prince money again. And that's the end of the patch notes. Uh, thank you, guys, for, for watching. Sorry about the delay on it. Um, I honestly just forgot, like, yesterday, like I said. Um, so thanks for being patient with that. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it helped. Um, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit the, uh, the sub button. If you want to see more content like this, go check out the other stuff on there. Like this video if you found it helpful. Sorry about the audio if it wasn't good. Um, sorry if it was good because I'm only going to be doing this video here. And I'll the next patch note video, I'll be in my... Uh, my new house, hopefully, unless something catastrophic happens. Um, but have a good day, guys. Uh, social media links and stream links in the, in the description, as always. And uh, take it easy till next time.